Okay, so if you watched my last video, um, then you would know that at the end of it, it kind of stopped abruptly. And that's because I didn't realize that the video recorder I'm using, it only will record up to so many minutes. And so I talked for I don't know how many minutes before I realized that it wasn't recording. So what I want to do is just kind of finish this passage. Um, we were almost finished with it when it stopped, but as you can see, I kind of highlighted some things because I didn't realize that it wasn't recording. So where we stopped was where it said brightly colored eggs. <clears throat> I want to start right there and I'm going to move through this quickly and kind of get to your assessment questions so we can talk about those. If you haven't taken the assessment, I'd like for you to do that after, um, this video so then you can I mean I want you to pause the video take the assessment and then you can come back and look at the answers and I ask you to do that because that way I'm not just giving you the answer you can compare my answers to yours if you want to write your answers down on a piece of paper so that you can see um, like how many you got right or wrong kind of the way we would we would in class you can do that also there are five questions. They're part A, part B, so it shouldn't take us too long to get through this. But let's just finish reading real quick. And it says, that was how it was long ago in Ukraine. Um, up until this point, what we've mainly talked about is how this family, Victor's family, they're used, they live in Ukraine, um, and they are using the eggs um, because they believe the eggs have superpowers. They believe that the eggs can bring good luck and prosperity to their family and help them with their crops and so it says that's how it was long ago in ukraine a country in southeast europe that lies next to romania poland and belarus in ages past um ukrainians viewed the symbol the egg as a symbol of new life and i highlighted that just because i thought that was important each spring the warm sun sun brought new life to earth so the people decorated the eggs representing life and used them in special ceremonies to honor the sun so before there was religion before there was christianity they did this very long ago just to honor the sun and the life that the sun brought each spring and it says when christianity and that's the religion belief in christ came to ukraine in AD, which is 988 years after the death, after death, AD, Christ, the egg took on religious meaning and became linked to Easter celebrations. And it says pigs with Christian designs suggesting Christ's resurrection, which here it'll tell you about resurrection, and eternal life. And so today, so there's a Christian connection to this and to Easter. Today, many people of Ukrainian descent make Pazanki. And they add it to um, the basket of traditional Easter food that the parish priest blesses on the day before Easter. At Easter time, some church communities decorate hundreds of eggs and sell them to the public. There are even classes that teach children as well as adults how to make these Ukrainian Easter eggs in a traditional way. So this is something that's still going on today. It's not just ancient times. And although some of the beliefs about... Um, Pazanki are different now than they once were. The tradition of making it is alive and well throughout the world. Okay, and I had already went through this on the other video, um, but I'll go back through it with you again. And it says, which statement identifies the main idea? And the answer was A. And so it says, while what painted eggs stand for may have changed, making Pazanki remains an important tradition in the Ukraine. And remember, the main idea and the theme are different. Main idea is what we usually see in um, nonfiction texts, and then we see theme in fiction. But theme has to do with the overall message, meaning. It usually is like a broad thing, like friendship or, uh, you know, a message about trusting others, whereas main idea is like a summary. And so this paragraph, these paragraphs, it was about what painting eggs stand for. And although it has changed, it's not about the sun anymore. Now we have a Christian um, kind of element to it. It says that it's still an important tradition there. And so that was that answer. And then if we move on to the next part, to part B, we see... 
it's asking for the proof. So let's let's look for proof. And it says red, yellow, and orange flecks danced on egg on the egg. Victor placed the egg in the hole and covered it with dirt as Papa said a prayer. Mm, I don't know. Let's see. Let's go keep reading. She lined up the jars of dye on the wooden table. She made them herself from wild berries, onion skins, leaves, and other items collected. That just talks about what Mama did. I don't think it talks about the traditions of everybody, so I don't think that's it. And again, same thing here. It just talks about Mama and the eggs that she did um, and the beliefs that Papa had. But let's look at D. There's even classes that teach children as well as adults how to make Ukrainian Easter eggs in the traditional way. And I think that's the answer. And the reason why I think that's the answer is because it shows that although things have changed, people today are still making the traditional eggs. Okay. So, let's keep going. It says, which of the following describes the structure? Okay, this is the one that we really had trouble with on the leap practice that we just took. I think maybe 2% of the students, so maybe like a handful of students got this correct. And so this is something we really want to look into. Which of the following describes the structure? That's the setup. The author explains how Easter is celebrated in Ukraine and then compares it to how Easter is celebrated in other countries. Okay, that's not correct because I didn't hear anything about Easter in other countries. The main focus is Ukraine. So, we know A is not correct. The author describes how Easter was celebrated in the past and discusses how it's celebrated today. I think that's a pretty good um, answer, but let's keep going. The author discusses how and why Victor's family make Pasanki and then dis discusses the history. Okay, that's even better because this one leaves out Victor and his family when Victor's family was a huge part of the story. Author discusses how Victor's family makes Pasanki and then explains why they have decided to uphold the ancient tradition. Okay, I'm going to go back into my paragraph and look because I think it's C or D. So we have Victor's family up here. We know that. But what happens after that? Okay. This is how it was long ago. It talks about Ukraine. It talks about uh, the history with uh, the sun. It talks about Christianity. And it talks about today. I don't see anything else about Victor's family. So it can't be D. So the answer is C. Which statement best describes the process of making Pazanki in the text? It's a simple process that anyone is capable of completing. It is a detailed process that takes many tools and dies. It is a difficult process that requires uh, practice and training. It's expensive and time consuming. Okay. It's a simple process that anyone is capable of completing. Um, I think that it is, uh, anybody is capable, but I wouldn't call it simple because you had to make the dyes, you had to heat up the, um, the tool, and also they have classes on it. So if it was just simple that anybody can do, I don't think they would have classes to teach it. I think it does require practice and training, but I think it's more detailed than it is anything. Okay. So now we're to our final part, and this is what Sage and a couple other people said, I didn't understand this. I didn't understand what this question meant. You tried, and a lot of you got, I mean, your answers were great. I think nobody got an, I gave everybody at least a two. But some of you, it wasn't really clear. I could tell by, you didn't understand what it meant, and so you had trouble answering. So it says, what is the relationship between painting eggs and a family's well-being. And maybe you just didn't understand what well-being meant. Well-being means overall health, happiness, prosperity. So what is the relationship between those two? So we always start by turning our, our question into a statement. So the relationship between painting eggs and family's well-being in Ukraine 
has to do with an ancient tradition called making the Zanke. Okay. Now, I know that I need to put my own thoughts. I know that I need to take things from the text. And so that's why I went ahead and highlighted and annotated as I went. That way I wouldn't have to go back and read the whole story. Because that can be overwhelming and confusing. So I'm going to go back up here and see if I can explain this to people. So um, I'm going to use this, this pink one. Um, Pizanti uses different symbols and meanings. Hold on. I'm going to change that. It's the process of using different symbols and meanings to create eggs that have the power to bring good luck, prosperity, and health to the family. According to the text and up here I made a mistake so it kind of will highlight it red for me I go back and fix that now I'm going to kind of introduce um, Victor's family that was a big part of this family painted and um, buried eggs to protect the family and crops. They also made um, eggs for people they love to help with their health. Okay, so I might say, for example, Mama painted a chicken for fertility for a family nearby. This, so I'm going to finish it up now. I've given evidence and now I'm going to finish it and I'm going to um, do my conclusion. This tradition is one way. Ukraine and people celebrate Easter because I got to put that part in there and um, overall health because that's the well being part. So that's how you would do a good solid paragraph for this. I know it's not the easiest one, but as you can see, I have my intro, I have my own thoughts, then I have proof from the text, I have a paraphrase in there about the chicken, and then I actually have a direct quote in there, and then I have my conclusion. So now thinking about that, when I assign you the next text, I want you to make sure that you have all of your parts. I want you to make sure that all of your parts, and then make sure you submit your assignment. Um, I'd love to hear comments, questions about this, anything that you uh, would like to know. I thank you for taking, you know, 30 minutes to watch this lesson and to complete your assignments. I hope that everybody is well and just continue to interact with me so that we can strengthen our reading skills and um, just learn more. So uh, look, reach out to me here or on Google.